Look at this cabinet with giant pineapples on the side of it. It is entirely covered in carved layers of wood. And hang on a minute. Was that the inside of the drawer it was also detailed with it? It's so detailed and such a level of craftsmanship. So no wonder it costs so much. So I want to try to make something like this myself, but there's a problem. I don't have any power tools or experience in doing anything like this. But I'm not going to let that stop me from giving it a go. So I've come across these little boxes on first dibs. Now they're still really expensive. They're $950 for the pair and they're on hold. So they're not even available anyway. They're already sold out. So I think something small like this could be a good starting point to learn how to do this without biting off more than I can chew because this one is definitely expert level. So I'm looking up close at it to really see how it's made. And it does really seem that the edges have been carved out in this almost like diamond shape. And then it's just smaller and smaller shapes on top of each other until it gets to these points. So I think the general way that the shape gets created by layering smaller and smaller pieces on top of each other is pretty straightforward. It's just these notches cut out at these angular bits that's gonna be what I need to figure out. And it's the whole thing, that's what makes it tramp art. So how do I make these little notches? Well, that is a mystery that I am going to figure out. What you're looking at here is the only video I could find on YouTube that shows a demonstration of how this is done. Now this guy is a pro, but before I try this out, I'm gonna need some tools. So I got this set of 12 wood carving tools because I figured surely at least one of the 12 has to be the right tool for this task. I'll leave it linked below. So to get started, I'm gonna use some scrap pieces of trim wood that I have from my woven frame project I did recently because I'm just testing this out to see if I can even manage to do this. So testing out the technique that my mate from YouTube explains. So you're essentially doing three cuts along the corner. So you do one, two, three. And then you move along leaving a gap and again, one, two, three. And you just keep going down along this way. Now I think he's like more of a perfectionist and like impressive person than me. So he, he measured his out and was doing them at exact intervals. That's too advanced for me. I'm just trying to get across the line here. So I, I won't be measuring it. So anyway, you go along the entire length doing the diagonal cuts. And then you turn it around. And this is when you start to create those shapes. You basically come in on the other side of the V shape to cut out those little slices that you've made. So that one cut down the side, as long as you do it at the right angle, it will cut out those little chips and then that leaves you with the V shape. So it's all well and good that this worked, but I don't have power tools and I will not be hand sawing so many pieces. So that's left me with my second mystery. How can I get so many cuts of wood like this without power tools? Well, I found these things on Amazon. These are long, thin strips of wood. The reason why I chose them is because they're thin enough that I can cut with some mitre shears. In a previous video, I did complain about these and literally as I was cutting these, they just started to fall apart. Like, like screws and bolts literally fell apart in front of me. So I had to buy some new ones and this time I bought some better ones and these are so much better. I'll link to these below because these are definitely the ones to get if you're thinking about getting some. Now I do really want these boxes, but I am considering this project to be a little bit of a test because what I actually wanna make is way more ambitious. Recently I did do a really simple makeover on a sideboard and it's definitely looking better than it was, but my original idea for this was tramp art. I was really inspired by something that I saw on Facebook Marketplace in Australia. And, and if I'd have seen it in England, I absolutely 100% would have bought it. It really inspired me and I just thought, this looks so cool. It's just so much more interesting than like your basic thing. And I do think it's doable. So if this project is a success, I might, if I'm up for it, do project number two on this sideboard in a bit of a tramp art style. But okay, back to what we're doing. I've got the thin sticks 
and I'm starting to carve out the little notches. Now this takes a while. It, this this would definitely be a good project to do with a friend because it's it's quite repetitive and you do really need quite a lot. Now the tips I have after doing this so many times is so you do kind of need to have a bit of excess at the end so that you have somewhere to put your other hand to make it stable. I found that these little sticks actually had little knots in the wood and it wasn't very good to notch out those spaces. So I just decided to make that my starting point, depending on where it occurred. It was just kind of working with what I had. So after doing a lot of this carving out the little notches, I ended up with a stack of sticks ready to go. So that's all well and good, but I think you know what I'm gonna say. There was another mystery. How am I going to create the box? Well, luckily Amazon had a wooden box. The important thing about this box is that the lid completely removes. Anything with a hinge was just too complicated for me at this stage. So I had what I needed. So using the box as a guide, I used my mitre shears to cut the strips of wood at a 45 degree angle so that I can position them around the border of the box. Now this was still early on when I was using the original mitre shears and I hadn't figured out yet that it's way easier to carve out the notches the whole length of the strip and then trim it to the size that you need. So definitely carve first, cut second. And the benefit of doing it that way means that you end up with all of these scrap pieces, but you don't chuck those out. You can use them as you need smaller pieces as you go up the layers. So I started on the lid of the box and just literally using wood glue and placing the pieces together to go around the edge. I let it dry and then I would go ahead and add the next layer and just kept building it up. But you know what they say, time's got a good way of healing. I'm back on my feet and I'm happier than ever, like I never thought forever was you. Really important note here, uh, you don't want to glue the box closed. You can only glue the piece either onto the lid or onto the base, not both. Otherwise, it'll get stuck closed. Okay, so it's starting to get a little bit hard because two of the sides have been done. And because of the shape of these, I no longer have a flat surface to put it on the top. And I kind of do need it to be flat at the top because otherwise it'll start sliding down while the glue dries. So I've got it propped up here with a little sanding pad and on this chopping board, it's working well enough for it to dry. One of the things that makes this not professional is that I'm doing it with this thin wood. And I definitely do think the effect looks way better on the thicker wood. Definitely if I had power tools, I'd be using this thickness because I just think it looks better. Like, and, and I also do think that what you're probably supposed to do is do just entire squares. So like this, but in a square shape and, and not having to do these corner cuts that I'm doing. But you know, this is just the nature of what I'm doing. So what that means for me with the approach that I'm taking is I'm having to get wood filler and just put it in the corners just to smooth it out. And like, it still doesn't look perfect, but the wood filler definitely is hiding a lot of mistakes and smoothing it out. And I think it's gonna go to a whole nother level when I stain it. And the one that I'm copying is black. And I've got that black stain from that cabinet I did recently. So I might as well use that. I'm feeling really optimistic that between the wood filler and the stain, it's gonna look pretty legit when it's done, I think. So now I just gotta keep going. Look at the disaster zone that is this workspace. <laughs> I'm officially at that stage in the project where I just want my dining table back. I feel like tramp art generally has a reputation for being a little bit like stuff made of junk and I just couldn't disagree more. And that feeling is even stronger now that I have engaged in this craft and just realized how amazing it is that people make these things. It truly is an incredible craft that I just have so much respect for now. I really hope that from watching this video, you also have developed an appreciation for what truly is an amazing craft. Even if mine is certainly 
entry level. <laughs> now we are getting really close, but as I've been looking at the original, I've come across another mystery. How am I going to make this pedestal leg thing? have one more mystery, but this one I haven't been able to solve. And that is, who is this lady? And why do I like her so much? I found her in the original video. I've reversed image searched her. I can't find anything about her, but something about her intrigues me. I feel like she's sort of become my patron saint of mysteries and she herself is a mystery. So if you have any idea of how I can figure out who she is, let me know in the comments below. But for now, I'll say farewell to you and also farewell to my mystery lady.